Hi, everybody. It's Gravante here to do a live reading for you as part of my author takeover. Wait a minute. Something doesn't seem right here. Hmm. Let me see if I can do something about that. <laughs> okay. That's much better. At least, I hope it is. For you, as well as for me. So, anyway... I am going to be doing a live reading from my upcoming release, The Z Brothers Zombie Exterminators Halloween Holocaust. comes out Tuesday, November 13th, so 10 days from now. Um, first, I'm going to remove this random brain, put it over here with my other random brains. And so what I'm going to do to start is I'm going to read the uh, introduction which it just kind of tells you if you're not familiar with the series, what it's all about, what's happened in the first couple of books. So it's a great way to, to get caught up and then dive right in. Welcome to the Z Brothers Zombie Exterminators. If you're just joining us, get ready for a wild ride. Here's what you need to know. Jonah is a dominating, gruff, classical music-loving badass that calls the shots and keeps them coming. Judas is a gunslinging, rock music loving goofball that is a little slow to learn, but always has his big brother's back. Together, they are the Z Brothers. In their first adventure, Curse of the Zombie Omelette, they met the woman of their dreams, hot and sassy JJ, along with her magical dog, Xanadu. Her dog has both the mysterious ability to slow time in a weird disco music field filled interlude sort of way and the uncanny ability to poop diamonds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I said, poop diamonds. With their new friend's help, the brothers put to rest an ancient curse that threatened to spark the zombie apocalypse. Their truck, Sasha, was totaled in the process, but they did end up with a new pet, Larry the Toothless Zombie. In their second full adventure, Zombie School Lockdown, the brothers become trapped inside a school with a toxic group of students and staff. Jonah and Judas were weaponless and had to improvise to survive. With the help of another new friend, Nantucket, a shy, geeky student, they bring the ex an explosive end to the outbreak. Investigating where it started, the brothers stumble across a tanker of toxic chemicals uncovered by a farmer. The tanker bears the mark of a company they used to work for, the Nitzau Corporation. So that's everything that's come before books one and book two. Now, uh, the section I'm going to read from is actually about three quarters of the way into book three. So just to kind of give you a little bit of story so you know enough of what's going on, but without spoiling too much. Um, so they're with Bert. Bert is a character who is introduced in the first book, and he's someone they used to work with at company called Pests Be Gone, when they were just regular exterminators before they became zombie exterminators. And generally speaking, Jonah and Judas hate Halloween. And there's a story behind that that hasn't been told yet, but I will be um, getting to that in a short story sometime soon. But just suffice it to say that Halloween is their one night off, that and April Fool's Day. They want nothing to do with either of those because people are idiots and often do things that would put them in harm's way. So they, they take the night off, they play video games, they drink, uh, they have a good time, and they don't do anything. But for some reason, they end up getting a call from Bert, who believes something's happening in his neighborhood, and only because it's him do they choose to go out on Halloween. Now, I'm going to skip over a lot. That tells you where they're at and why they're there. Uh, they end up trapped in a house, and they find Teletubby costumes. And they need something to get past these zombies that are starting to appear everywhere. So they suit up in the Teletubby costumes. Um, Xanadu has gone missing. Nobody knows where he is. Uh, you will, the reader, because it's, it's that part of the story is being told. You get to learn a lot about the dog Xanadu and where he came from. Uh, adds more to the mystery than it does revealing anything, but it does give you deeper details on him. While they're escaping, they end up uh, encountering this kind of hoodlum, this thug, and he's a drug dealer. And so what, one, one quick fact about my story is I don't believe, I don't, I know that's not true, I don't write stories about fast zombies because 
I think if there were fast zombies, they'd kill everybody. There'd be no chance of surviving fast zombies and animals or bugs. Just the game's over. There's no story to write. We're all dead if that is the case. So anyway, uh, but in this particular story, we do have fast zombies because they, they end up having this fight with this drug dealer. Uh, the drug dealer gets killed. He happened to have a large bag of cocaine. The cocaine goes everywhere, all over a bunch of zombies, and now all of a sudden they are fueled by this drug, and they are fast. So the group gets away, uh, was trying to get away, and they climb onto a large Caterpillar tandem steamroller. So it's one of those things you see crushing uh, concrete and pavement down to flatten it out, blacktop. And it's got two large drums on either side. And that's what they're using as their getaway vehicle. And let me get to the right spot. For anyone reading along at home, it's chapter 16, Cocaine Zombies. Go, go, Jonah shouted at JJ, who was busy familiarizing herself with the controls. She glanced to the side and saw the dead leaving behind their meal in pursuit of fresh meat. They leapt and ran straight for the steamroller. Her eyes went wide and she slammed her purple mitt into the lever that sent the roller lurching forward. Jonah and Judah stood on opposite sides atop the machine, clinging to the side rails of the operator's canopy. Bert lay in the space behind J.J., gasping. The roller bounced as it drove across crushed gravel, and the brothers struggled to hold on. How much ammo you have left, Judas? Two or three bullets in the pisto pistol? I've got plenty more ammo in my pockets, but no way to get to it. He paused a moment. We need to ditch these costumes. They weren't such a great idea after all. No, they were a good idea. I don't think we would have made it through that crowd if it wasn't for being covered head to toe. It's one of the best defenses. It's just too bad they're so awkward to move around in. How about you, Jonah? Just one shot, Jonah said, shifting around to get a better footing and a clear view of the zombies coming for them. The dead came in a frenzy, outpacing the hulking steamroller. When one of them leapt over a pile of lumber faster than an Olympic hurdler, Judah screamed. Did you see that? He pointed. That one jumped over a pallet of two-by-fours. Jonah turned to J.J., wishing Xanadu was with them. They could really use that little guy right now. Can this thing move any faster? Not much, J.J. answered. Top speed is only around 10 miles an hour. Good for slow ones, but not those things. She tore her helmet off and threw it into the darkness, daring to look behind them. Then in front, where a four-foot-high chain-link fence stood in their path. Hang on, it's about to get bumpy. The large Caterpillar tandem steamroller slammed into the fence, slowing as it pushed the barrier over and flattening it. The dozen or more cocaine-fueled zombies covered the remaining distance from behind and clamored at the back of their getaway vehicle. What are we going to do? Judas shouted. Jonah shook the head of the large red costume. He had no idea. They were outnumbered, overpowered, and soon to be out of ammo. JJ, how many shots you have left? Four or five? I can help, but someone else needs to drive. You ever driven one of these things? Jonah asked Bert. No, he gulped. Well, you're going to have to learn. JJ, can you show him how to operate this beast? Yeah, I think so, sugar. It's not too hard, just a little difficult to stop. That's okay. We don't want to stop. Keep this thing moving, he turned to Judas. Let's try to keep them off of us. Kick them and block them from climbing on. Shoot only when you have to, but if we can prevent them from getting up here, hopefully we can stay alive long enough to come up with a better plan. Come on, honey, JJ called to Bert as she rose out of the driver's seat. Get over here. Bert got on all fours and crawled as the machine shuddered across the bumpy terrain, making its way to the street. What do I do? I stop and I take a drink. That's what I do. Okay, uh, back to the story. Da, 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 da. Beside the roller, the nearest of the fast-moving dead reached for Judas, who used his right arm to cling to the metal pole. The clown that took out the drug-dealing punk growled and snapped at him, clawing in the left leg of the suit. He'd never seen savagery like this one carried in its eyes. He kicked out in a hopeless attempt to keep the clown from gr growing closer. 
It's pretty simple, J.J. shouted at Bert, scooting her costume form out of his way. Just keep this controller pushed forward and use the wheel to steer. He reached out and put his hand on the controller. How do I stop it? You don't, Jonah barked from the other side. Keep it moving, no matter what. Okay, okay. J.J. grabbed hold of the railing next to Judas with her left arm and struggled to grip the butt of her revolver inside the suit. The vehicle drove onto the pavement, finally smoothing out. She yelled at Bert, Turn the wheel to the right. Take us back toward our cars near your house. Okay, the roller groaned as he twisted the steering wheel as far as it would turn. J.J. pivoted and found Judas screaming as the clown zombie clawed its way up his leg and into the cab. The only thing keeping him from getting pulled off was his arm wrapped around the support column. Two others were close on the heels of the clown. J.J. clutched her gun and aimed. It took three shots before the clown dropped. The roller jumped as the body fell under the massive rear drum, sending the group of Teletubbies swaying and clutching tight to keep from falling off. By the time J.J. got her footing back, two more of the costume beasts clawed and screeched just inches away. On Jonah's side, only one of the drug-fueled dead had made it within reach. He considered shooting it, but with only one bullet remaining in Brutus, that's his revolver, he needed to save that shot for an emergency. The suit's giant stuffed arms prevented him from being able to grab anything as a weapon, so he kicked the zombie, trying to knock it back and hoping it would get caught under the rear drum. The zombie was a man, dressed as a woman, a fairly attractive one, too if you didn't count the fact that most of the flesh was peeled away from the left part of, her, part of her face, revealing a bloody mask of muscle and bone. Her teeth showed through the wound, gnashing and biting as she grasped for her meal. She had a Hello, My Name Is sticker on the top of her blue mini dress that read, Katie. Come and get it, Katie, Jonah taunted, trying to lure him closer. The he-she zombie surprised Jonah by slowing for a moment. Then, with a hungered shriek, it bounded from the ground and landed right on top of him, flattening him to his back behind the driver's chair. Jonah gasped, the fall knocking the wind from his lungs, leaving him struggling for breath. The creature tore into the suit's padding. Its hands were like claws, digging into the stuffing, tearing chunks free as it worked to dine on Jonah's flesh. When Katie's thrashing arm smacked Bert in the back of the head, he wailed, turning the wheel in panic and causing the heavy machine to jerk. <clears throat> the sudden movement sent JJ's legs flailing off the top, only staying on the roller because she'd wedged an arm of her costume into the railing. Judas's feet slipped all the way off. He grasped the support column with both hands to keep himself from going over the edge. His big green feet of the costume, dangled in the air, the dead grasping and growling for a bite of his hide. They didn't care they couldn't see his flesh. The stimulant crazed zombies knew warm meat wait awaited inside. Screams came from everywhere, the scared panic of the living and the savage hunger of the undead. Bert's terrified shouts distracted the zombie ravaging Jonah's costume. Its head snapped around. Seeing exposed skin sticking out the top of the costume. It let loose of Jonah and lunged forward, clamping its jaw onto Bert's neck. He let out an anguished shriek, and the steamroller jerked back and forth. Jonah climbed out from under the zombie and regained his footing. He smashed a large red leg into the side of the he-she zombie, kicking at it repeatedly until it let go of Bert. The wig-wearing man's face dripped blood as it glared at Jonah and growled. Jonah kicked it square in the jaw and sent it hurtling off the machine. It fell to the ground with a smack on the pavement but hopped back to its feet and resumed pursuit of the runaway meal. Jonah looked at Bert and saw the red liquid gushing from the wound. His stomach sank. Bert blinked up at him, tears of pain and anguish in his eyes. A look of knowing. How long? A few minutes, maybe. Bert's body lurched forward as a heavy sob tore through him. He nodded. Thanks for coming, Jonah. Thanks for trying. I didn't deserve it. J. 
JJ scrambled back onto the roller and Judas repositioned himself as, so he could use his gun arm. He shot the nearest zombie, knocking it to the street and causing the others to slow, having to avoid the falling body. Construction vehicle neared the turn onto Oklahoma Street. Here, JJ shouted, turn here. Bert turned the wheel and the roller moved with steady certainty onto the pavement. As it did so, Jonah saw the van parked at the corner and things clicked for him. The paint was faded and it didn't look well maintained, but it was definitely a Nitzau Corporation vehicle. No one was inside from what he could tell, but his hand twitched on Brutus and he grit his teeth. Farther down the block, their Prius and JJ's Charger were parked, surrounded by 20 or so slow-moving zombies. The sound of the steamroller caught the dead's attention and they turned, coming up the street to meet them. The downward slope allowed the roller to pick up speed, but it was far too slow to escape the cocaine-frenzied zombies. Jonah looked at Judas. They needed a plan right now. There were six runners in pursuit, another dozen slow ones behind them. They couldn't reverse course to take out the fast ones or they'd be overtaken. They had to keep moving forward. He looked out the rear of the canopy to the roller's rear section. There wasn't much space between the driver's section and the drum, but, it, but if they could get the dead to jump on the back instead of the sides, it would help them it would, it would keep them away from Bert and JJ in the cab. He yanked off his mask and chucked it at the nearest runner, knocking it back and slowing it. Judas, Judas, let's yell out this way and try to entice them to come at us over the drum, keep them from being able to climb aboard. Judas took aim at the one closest to his side, firing a shot and dropping the zombie. He saw that his brother had removed his mask and, mask and tore his off as well using it as a projectile to trip a runner. Okay, bro, these things are faster than those damn yetis, for sure. I don't know about that, Jonas said, but at least they ain't as big. What do you want me to do, JJ asked. Jonah looked her in the eyes and tilted his head toward Bert. She followed his motion, saw the bloody mess on his neck, and let out a silent, oh no. She bent next to Bert as the brothers yelled at the dead. Are you still with us? She spoke soft but loud enough he could hear her over the diesel engine while placing a, a purple arm on his back and the mitt containing the pink lady, that's her gun, directly against his head in case he turned. Bert looked at her, his eyes wet and wide, from, and gazed into JJ's. He nodded. Yeah, for the moment. Fresh tears welled. You're sure pretty, JJ. The brothers are lucky to have you in their lives. Thanks, sugar. I'm lucky to have them, too. He smiled back at her. I'll be okay for a bit, I think. Long enough to give these bastards payback, at least. He leaned his head forward to where the dead came in a nice column straight at them. Perfect, she grinned. Then a movement from a yard across the street caught her attention. She glanced up. Her mouth fell open, and she shouted. Xanadu! Okay, so that is um, an excerpt from Halloween Holocaust. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gets you interested and excited in not only the upcoming book, but the series, if you haven't read any of the Z Brothers before. Uh, not your typical Zompok by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, it's it's a story of the brothers and their and how they became zombie exterminators and there's a lot of mystery behind that that is getting revealed in the books and all of that is kind of coming into play now. Uh, if you've read the stories in Undead Worlds, those are, are kind of the beginning of their origin. And then uh, all of that is going to be playing into what happens in book three and then the final book, book four, which will be out sometime in 2019. So anyway, thank you very much for joining me. I am going to take my brain and uh, see if I can put it back in there so I can get back to writing. And thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.